Good evening. I'm glad that you're here tonight and uh, what we call Good Friday. And before I kind of get into an explanation of Good Friday, uh, introduce myself. My name is David Lesner. I'm the lead pastor, one of the pastors here at Creekwood United Methodist Church, in case this is your first time with us and we haven't got a chance to uh, meet before. Uh, I want to welcome you, and I'm glad that you're here tonight. You're going to hear from a variety of different voices, musical, reading, um, otherwise in uh, what we call a tenebrae service. Um, before I get into, again, the explanation of this, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. And uh, one, I'm going to thank um, all of the people, Scotty Pabin and her design team, the choir, the musical people, for helping the service um, be put on. Because um, last night we clapped for them at the end, but at the end of this service tonight, we're going to ask you to depart in silence out of reverence, um, out of emotion, um, every reason that we have to leave out of silence when we're talking about the death of Jesus. And so I just want to acknowledge them up front. The other thing I'll acknowledge is at the end of Monday Thursday last night, someone said, we didn't take an offering. And I said, did you want to? And they said, well, yeah, I had money to give. And I said, I'm so enthusiastic that you uh, wanted to give money. That's exciting. Uh, we're not going to take an offering tonight either, but there are offering boxes in the back if you feel moved to give back to God what God has given to you. I just want to I'm, I'm glad that people are enthusiastic about offering. That's exciting. Um, but as we get into Good Friday, um, the question we usually get asked is, what's so good about this? We're wearing black. The lights are going to go out. We're talking about the death of Jesus. What's good about this? And the actual uh, word is a German word. I believe it's pronounced Godus. Um, and it either means God's or holy. It's God's Friday or Holy Friday. And in that... Um, means something and that even with the death of Jesus we see something miraculous happen and that you would think that it would be Caesar's Friday or Pontius Pilate's Friday or evil's Friday but it's not it's God's Friday because God can turn even the death of Christ into the most triumphant victory in that we've ever seen and for all of us so um, it's good because of what this um, accomplishes for us because of God's great love for us but it's still sad and this won't be the happiest of services that you've ever been to, and that's good, and that's fine, because it's okay to encounter all of the emotions God gives us. So what we'll experience tonight is a kind of alternation between um, scripture and music, that music uh, complementing the scripture, the scripture complementing the music. Every year I pick uh, one of the gospels to go through kind of bit by bit to tell us about the uh, crucifixion of Jesus. So this year you will hear from uh, the account of the gospel from Matthew. And so we'll get started. Uh, when Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming. 
and the man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during this festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. From that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord, he answered. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to not have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi, he replied. So you have said so. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I would kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. 
They, then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hands on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At the hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all of his disciples deserted him and fled.
Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. And at last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is this that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man, seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? We have now heard this blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, you Messiah, who is, that, who is it that struck you? Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus says, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they have against you? He gave him no answer, not even a single charge. So the governor was greatly amazed.
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole court, cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him. They took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests and also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from that cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last.
the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom the earth shook and the rocks were split the tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place they were terrified and said truly this man was God's son When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door and the tomb of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. As you go from this place here in just a few moments, we invite you to stay here in the sanctuary as long as you need to meditate or pray, whatever it is that would be most meaningful for you. For those like me that are more chatty, let's wait till we're outside to be respectful of those who need their time of silence here in the sanctuary. Remember in all of this, when we ask, were you there? When we read, what happened? All of this is for you. Mm -hmm. 